This is the new Toyota iGo Cross. And in this review, we're gonna tell you the 10 key things you need to know about this car. But before we start, if you want a great deal on your next car, go to whatcar.com and subscribe to our channel to see lots of other car reviews. So the Toyota iGo was a small hatchback produced by the Japanese manufacturer between 2005 and 2021. And in that time, there were two generations of the car, but now it's been replaced by this. And you might think that this is called the Toyota iGo X, but apparently you're supposed to pronounce it Toyota iGo Cross, which becomes even more confusing when you think that Toyota already has the Toyota Yaris Cross, with Cross actually spelt at the end of the name. Anyway, the X in the name of this new iGo is a hint at what Toyota's tried to do in reinventing it. So it's longer, it's taller, it's wider, it's 11 millimeters higher up off the ground, they basically tried to make it more SUV than it was before. So what's this car up against? Well, if you're looking at the iGo Cross then you're probably also considering other tiny hatchbacks like the Hyundai i10 and the Kia Picanto, but you might also be looking at this as an alternative to other cars like the Skoda Fabia and the Dacia Sandero. And that's because it's expensive. Spec for spec, the iGo Cross costs more than an i10 and a Picanto. And the reason you might also be looking at a Fabia and a Sandero, even they're really there from the class above, is because the higher end versions of this car actually cost the same as those much bigger and better cars. So what do you get for your money? Well, the interior, to be honest, doesn't feel particularly high quality. You might like the kind of quirky design and layout that it's got, and you can have these colored highlights inside as well. Plus, to be fair, the climate controls have a satisfying click to them. These stalks also feel pretty high quality, and the steering wheel is wrapped in fairly good quality feeling leather. But there's also loads of these hard, shiny plastics that just don't feel or look particularly nice. And listen to how tinny the doors sound when you close them. So to be honest, there are quite a few other rivals, the i10 included, that feel better quality inside. As for the infotainment system, there are three different screen sizes and the screen that you get depends on the trim that you go for. So entry level pure has a seven inch screen, mid spec edge, which is one that we're in, gets this eight inch screen and the top spec models get a nine inch system, which actually run different software to the lower trim levels. And those top spec models have a simpler layout. They're a little bit better to use, but fundamentally, whichever one you go for, the screen can be a bit slow to respond. And particularly on those lower two trim levels, it's got a confusing layout that's a bit tricky to get your head around. You do have some shortcut buttons around here, but on the lower trims, you don't have built-in sat-nav with the system, but you still have a map shortcut button. So if you press it, it just says you don't have a sat-nav. But what's good is that if you're running Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, both of which come standard on all models of the Argo Cross. When you press this map shortcut button, it takes you to the sat-nav app that you're running on your phone, which is pretty handy. Now, I'm gonna point out the obvious here. There isn't much room in the back of an Argo Cross. And to be honest, if you're looking at this car or any other rival that it's up against, you're going to accept that practicality is not a strength. But still, sat in the back, if you're an adult, there isn't much room. So with the driver's seat in my driving position, I don't really have much spare leg room. There is though quite a lot of space under the seat in front to put your feet. Headroom isn't great either, especially if you go for this canvas roof, which on an English summer's day like this is an absolute must on the options list. But if you do go for it, it reduces the headroom further. So basically I can fit. It's just not somewhere I'd like to spend several hours in the back. But for a car like this, that's fine. It is a shame though that the windows are so small because you can't really get much light back here and there's no door bins either. And the doors themselves are absolutely tiny and they don't open very far either. So, okay, surprise, surprise, it's not that comfortable in the back. And the boot, even by small car standards, is small. You get 231 litres of storage, which is down on the i10's 250 litres. Both cars will get three carry-on size suitcases in, but it's a much tighter squeeze to do so in the Toyota. There's also quite a drop to the boot floor from the loading lip and it generally has an awkwardly shaped opening. Practicality is unlikely to be a priority if you're looking at this car, but there are definitely more practical small cars around. 
Now the Igo Cross on the road, it's relatively firm, but still supple enough to be comfortable. And it handles pretty neatly as well. So it controls its body movements nicely. The steering isn't the most responsive in the world, but it's accurate, it builds weight naturally and nicely. So it's a pretty nice thing to drive, to be honest. However, the thing that really lets the Igo Cross down is this engine. Now, it's a one litre, three cylinder petrol engine with no turbochargers and just 71 brake horsepower. So the nought to 62 miles per hour time is 14.9 seconds, 14.9. So that's pretty slow to put it mildly. In fact, this is one of the slowest accelerating cars on sale today. But the top speed of this car is 98 miles an hour. So you're not gonna get there very quickly, but you will be able to eventually reach 70 miles an hour and then do motorway journeys. If you are trying to get anywhere in a hurry though, this is definitely not the car for you. But on those occasions where you do need to drop down a couple of gears, it's reasonably satisfying to do so because this five-speed manual gearbox is actually quite nice to use. It's got positive action, feels fairly slick. Yes, the performance is absolutely gutless and terrible, but you will get 50 miles per gallon without trying too hard. But the biggest asset of this car on the road is its turning circle. It's 9.4 meters, and that is among the tightest turning circle of any car around. So what's the best thing about the iGo Cross? Well, it's the sensible stuff, really. You get lots of safety equipment as standard, like six airbags, automatic emergency braking, and lane key persistence. And you also get a massive 10 year or 100,000 mile warranty, as long as you take it to a dealer for a service every year. But the worst thing about the Igo Cross is the gutless performance on offer from this engine. Of course, the upside is that the fuel economy is very good, but more often than not, you will find yourself absolutely thrashing this engine to get anywhere, even close to quickly. So that is everything you need to know about the Toyota Igo Cross. But what do you think of it? Tell us in the comments below. And to read more about this car and all of its rivals, go to whatcar.com where you can also get a great deal on your next car. In fact, right now, you can save more than a thousand pounds on an Igo Cross and more than 1500 pounds on a Hyundai i10. Click on the link or look in our description below to go straight to all of our deals. But before you go, subscribe to our channel to see lots more car reviews like this.